All my life, I've been bullied and discriminated against being Asian, and I knew the others were going through the same. So I combined all that I knew, all that I learned, and developed my own martial art form, Jeet Kung Do. Then came the one inch punch. I was born on November 27, 1940, in San Francisco, Chinatown, during the hour and year of the dragon. My mother was of Eurasian ancestry, making her a half day, and my father was an opera star who toured the US, where from the young age, I was exposed to the world of entertainment. And when I was one year old, appeared in a film alongside my father. In many ways, the camera became my first love, but that was cut short when my family decided to move back to Hong Kong. Hey, Jing Chong! And a rusty can hit the back of my head. I turned to find a handful of British students on their high horses. That was the first time I was exposed to racism, and I don't know how to respond. The only thing I could feel was anger, and the only thing I wanted to do is to get them to stop. It wasn't until I heard one of them scream, What are you gonna do about it, half-breed? That I finally act. I floated one of them, and the others had me surrounded. I dodged two swings, kicked in one of their knees, jabbed another in the throat, and elbowed the last one under the eye. I brushed myself off and walked home with bloody fists, angry at who I was, but even angrier at how they wheeled me. When I got home, my parents took one look at me and know what had happened, another fight. I told them what had happened. They ganged up on me and insult my race, our family. They knew I wasn't one to let go of my honor, so they figured if I was going to keep fighting, then I may as well do it the correct way. Before I knew it, I was sent to martial arts school, where I met my master, Ip Man. Many of his students refused to spar with me because of my mixed ancestry, but Ip Man saw potential and trained me personally. He wanted to redirect my skills as a fighter away from the streets and towards something safer. So he told us, if we had to fight, do it fairly and in tournaments. But there are some street fights I just couldn't turn away from, not when I knew I could stop them. And so, in spring of 1959, I was involved in yet another fight with the son of the infamous Triad family and the police were called to the scenes. I had beaten the son so badly that the officer looked at him with pity. But as they double checked to his family background, they turned that pity onto me. They escorted me home and spoke to my parents, who were told three things. One, despite my best efforts, my fighting were getting out of hand. Second, they had been lenient up until now. But one more fight, they would have to put me in jail. But that wasn't the biggest concern. Because, third, the dishonored triad family had almost certainly sent out a contract for my life. After that day, my parents made the decision to move me back to US, where I would finish high school. All my life, I've been bullied and discriminated against being Asian, and I knew the others were going through the same. So, there I combined all I knew, all that I learned, and developed my own martial art form, Chi Kung Do, the way of intercepting fists. It was a style to combine with the East and the West, and focus on the flow and freedom, like water. It was about adapting to one's surrounding and circumstances. It was around then that I invented my most famous technique, the one inch punch. With just one inch between my fist and my opponent, I was able to send them flying backward. This got the attention of Hollywood, who were impressed with what I could do. They cast me in Green Onnet as Kaito, the sidekick 
who fast become a fan's favorite. I was grateful for every moment, but something inside me made me want to represent Asians more than just a sidekick. So I pitched in a new idea for a show. A Shaolin monk find himself in the Wild West, but was told by the executive that it wasn't going to work and too risky. A few weeks later, they sent a casting call for a new movie. A Shaolin monk who find himself in the Old West. I immediately went back to Hong Kong, where I start my own production company. Determined to prove that Asian can be the main protagonist and start in my very own film, Return of the Dragon. In it, I fought my friend Chuck Norris in what we could later be described as one of the best scenes in the martial art and film history. With this, I was now ready to make my way back to US and pitch my new project named Enter the Dragon. The film would mark the first partnership between Hong Kong and US production companies. Like Ji Kung Do, the film would connect the East and the West and would be metaphor for my life and work. In 1973, I waited for critics' response, unsure if audiences would accept a new type of film. And they love it. It was referred as one of the most profitable films ever made and perhaps the most influential action movies of all time. Many would say it cemented my legacy in Hollywood history. But for me, it was about breaking the mold for Asian Americans all over the world. My name is Lee Xiaolong or Bruce Lee and I broke the racial barrier by becoming the first ever Hollywood martial artist in film.